You're watching Life on Video. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Life on Video. Today, we're at the Biosphere 2 in Oracle, Arizona. Let's check it out. Here we're at the entrance and masks are required beyond this point. And you always have to remember, we are still in the desert. No matter where you go, how cool it looks, we're still in the desert, still deadly wildlife everywhere. We just walked through the entrance. The lady at the front gave us our description because right now what they're doing is self-guided tours. They have an app that you download. On the app, they have preloaded videos. And what you're looking for, she said there are 18 different stops throughout the tour. And as you stop there, there'll be another video that pops up in the app that you can watch. And it'll give you the explanation for where you're at. She said this is over, or she said roughly about a mile long trek. 60% of it's outside, 40% of it's inside. And she said roughly about an hour and 15 minutes. So we'll see how that holds up. For those of you that may wonder what the biosphere actually is, this is it right here in front of us. What the biosphere actually was created for was to recreate life in space. In the 80s, they brought in a bunch of scientists to live inside the biosphere and see if they could start from scratch and recreate life on Earth. It lasted for about two years and then they basically just chalked it up to being a failure because they found within like the first couple months they were running out of oxygen. They couldn't produce enough food. After the failed two year experiment of trying to recreate life from scratch, they did have, I believe it was Columbia University came out and they did a six month stint after plant life and the environments had already been created to see how that would go in an environment that was already created um, from scratch to see how long they could last. And they just did a six month experiment, which was successful. With this being a biosphere and having all these biomes and environments, they are still like science and technology oriented, obviously, given like the design and structure of these buildings and what they can do inside. Right here, they have these reflective mirrors and it's another way of harvesting energy from the sun. So the mirrors are curved. And what they do is they actually project the light straight into, I believe it's like these sensors right here. And it saves the energy that way. One real crazy thing about these biomes, this is the rainforest one right here in this building. And the trees are actually pushing against the glass. They're growing so high and so well inside this biome that they actually have to go up and trim the tree so they don't puncture through the glass. That's super cool. This is the actual airlock where the Biosphere 2 crew entered and exited when they were coming in for their two year stint. Right now we're inside the orchard. And if you look way up there, you can see what I meant about those trees pushing against the outside. Like they're growing so well in these environments. There's moisture everywhere. This is so awesome. They've got all the markers for what type of trees these are. You know, lemon trees, grapefruit trees. These are all the fruit bearing trees and this is what they would have used for food depending on what type of food they were looking for you can even see here we're getting some fruit starting to sprout out of there they have coffee over here as well guava now they send us through a completely different route than the actual scientists would have gone. I believe they would have turned right when they came in because this leads us straight outside and they obviously had to stay inside the entire time that they were here. But that was super cool to see all of the different fruit bearing trees, the coffee, the guava, all of that stuff that they would use to try to sustain food and get sustenance while they're actually 
locked inside the biosphere. The energy center is actually the biosphere's own power plant on property. And I mean, it is in Arizona, so the temperatures can get scorching hot. And imagine being in this glass building when the temperatures are 110, 115. They had to create their own power plant in order to regulate the temperatures and have enough, enough energy to basically run the air conditioner to cool this place down. This would be one of the more recent additions for the biosphere. It's a graded fencing to allow more oxygen in. This is because one of the biggest downfalls to this was they couldn't keep the oxygen levels high enough to support people. So they did have to like pump in more oxygen in order to sustain human life inside for a while. It's unfortunate because right behind me, you can see this dome shaped building. That is called the lungs. And the unfortunate thing is, because it's a self-guided tour, they don't have anybody going back into the lungs. But I have heard that on normal tours, pre-COVID, you could go back and see the lungs. But what it is, is basically it's a massive rubber bladder and an aluminum tray underneath it. And it's all together, I believe, 20 tons of equipment. But what it does is, as the pressure inside here rises, there's a way for that pressure to escape underground over into the lungs, and it basically fills that area up. As the pressure decreases, the lung will collapse and push that pressure back into the biome. And then what it does is it prevents all these windows from blowing out because the pressure with the heat and then getting cool at night, the pressure differentiates so much that they needed to create something like this, the lungs, so that way they could regulate the pressure inside. Now we're gonna head into the desert biome. And it actually does just smell really like a greenhouse if you've ever been inside a greenhouse. It has just that fresh plant, that dirt smell to it. It's really, really unique. This is actually where the air pumps out for the air conditioner and it cools down this entire building. It's really, really strong to be honest. One of the nice things is that with these controlled environments, they are able to experiment a lot with different things. You know, for example, they can try to harvest or produce more water in a desert climate like this and, and see the different kinds of things of like, you know, how does evaporation work in certain temperatures? How does rainfall actually affect desert plants? It's a really, really unique kind of area that they can just really do whatever they want and, and figure out whatever they need to figure out without harming the real environment. This is actually a test site that they've carved out and I'm not 100% sure what they're testing but they are running it looks like fresh water from a hose source in here down through these different plants and we are still in the desert biome so this is what I'm saying they can try these things out without actually harming the environment because if these plants become dependent on this water as they're testing it, they're able to still supply them the water they need versus if they're out in the desert, they'd have to remove that water source from them, ultimately probably killing the plants. Turns out what they're trying here is they're trying to figure out aquaponics in the desert, which is a way to, it's a method of growing plants that depends on fish bacteria and recirculating water that helps grow vegetation at a much faster rate than normal. And it has significant water savings too. Down here is where they have the ocean habitat. There are live fish, there are live coral, and they say this is roughly a million gallon tank filled with Salt water, obviously, refreshing back through there, pumping in the salt water. You can see the sea foam down there as well. Ah, oh, it's so amazing. Now, I don't know if we're gonna actually be able to go down there and get close enough to see anything, but man, I really wish we could. 
Here's a better shot of the ocean exhibit. They have boats down there. Looks like some type of UV light experiment going down there. That's amazing. You can see too that they have running streams throughout this whole biosphere. And here's another airlock door that would have been shut to prevent the cross spread of the different environments and the climates to one another. We just walked into the rainforest area and it is so humid. Whew. I mean, you're talking about going from the desert into the rainforest? My gosh, it's humid. The entire walkthrough of the rainforest literally is from this door right here to there's just a door right over here <laughs> that you go through and that's it. So it's about 20 yards. It's amazing in here. And one of the coolest things is, I guess if you work here, you get to trek through the jungle every day with literally no danger of the venomous and deadly animals that are typically found in the jungle. I think that would be an amazing experience. This is an awesome experience. The jungle may be like one of the shortest walkthroughs next to like the orchard, but wow, I'm sweating profusely. And the environment, I mean, I lived in Okinawa, Japan for two years in basically like a tropical environment where there were jungles. And this is exactly like it. What an amazing biome. Really like it. What'd you think, baby girl? Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah? What was your favorite part? Rainforest, Did you like the rainforest? rainforest? No. No? The ocean? Yes. Yeah. You like the ocean part? That was pretty cool. We had to get a boat. I know. They have a boat out there, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, after about almost an hour of walking through, we're done. I don't know. I have to believe some of this is condensed for COVID reasons. But still being able to walk through the rainforest, see the ocean exhibit, see where the lungs are, the different stuff like that was really cool. I just, I kind of thought there'd be more, honestly. But hey, what there was, was super, super amazing. It was a great experience. And I honestly would love to come back and see if they open up any more of this post-COVID and take those tours. And now that I'm looking at the map, I see there's actually a west lung and a south lung. You can see that the entire thing is not massive, but there's so much to see inside. It really, really is cool. These different buildings up here will house researchers, scientists, different people that are staying to either work or experiment in the biosphere. So they do house students and scientists out here to help out with their travel costs and everything because honestly, this is owned by the U of A and the U of A is roughly an hour and some change drive from here. So to expect those kids and students to drive back and forth to work out here, it's kind of unreasonable. So it's cool that they have these environmental friendly casitas out here that they can stay at while they're researching. The prices to get in, they're reasonable. I've never been, and then this is only just an hour and 20 minutes drive away from where we live, but I've always wanted to come and I definitely will be coming back because they're in a phased reopening plan right now. They're technically in stage three of their three part phased reopening, but I gotta believe there's a stage four, which is just no stage. <laughs> You're just kind of completely reopen. And I would like to come on an actual tour with a guide where maybe you get to do some of the, the behind the scenes stuff and see the pipe working and all the mechanics that go on underground to recreate the earth-like situations in the biosphere that honestly the earth can do on its own. 
But in order for us to recreate it, we need technology, machines, pipes, labor. Like we need all that stuff to do what the earth can already do by itself. So I would love to come back in a full reopen and get a full tour and see what that's all about. Upon exiting, they do have a small little gift shop that you can pick up a souvenir, buy this for your hat, koozie, something like that if you want. Every good attraction has a gift shop. We really got lucky today and came on a day where it's only 86 degrees outside. Now, this is a very foreign concept in the middle, well, middle of summer, beginning of July in Arizona. We just happened to pick a great day where there's tons of overcast, there's rain in the forecast, and it actually turned out to be a very pleasant trip. And that's gonna do it from the Biosphere 2 in Oro Valley, Arizona. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content here on Life on Video. Later.